Hey everybody, uh, sorry for the delay in getting this video out and uh, just delaying videos in general. Time is a very precious commodity to me at this stage of life I am in. Um, so there will be times where getting out content will be ch more challenging than other times, um, but I will be trying to do my best to get stuff out there for you all. Um, starting here with this video I wanted to do and honestly I promised. A team explanation of my 2023 San Diego Regionals team. I'm calling it a team explanation because I want to focus more on like the thought process that went into the team as well as how I might adjust or evolve the team going forward for the remainder of the Series 1 format, which at the recording of this, we have about two more weeks left of. My name is Tyler and I go by at across online at times and let's jump in. We'll start off by talking about the tournament itself. It was on the date of January 7th, 2023 in San Diego, California at the San Diego Convention Center. Um, as a side note, if anyone's looking for a travel destination to just go vacation or uh, just to kind of explore, I would highly recommend San Diego. Probably my favorite, uh, favorite California city I've visited um, in terms of like touring or traveling to or visiting. Um, was very impressed with San Diego and the bay is beautiful all the uh, maritime action going on in the water it's yeah it's really cool so and there's some we visited some cool stuff in the city uh, with friends so I would highly recommend it if you are looking for a fun travel destination so uh, now aside from that let's get back to the tournament uh, this was my first regional tournament in over three years the last regional tournament I played in was in Portland back in October of 2018, which would have been officially the 2019 season. Uh, so it's been a while, which is crazy to me because from the years 2016 to 2019, I had played in 11 regional tournaments as well as two world championships. Uh, I, I played a lot in, at one point and it was a lot of fun, um, but I, I slowed down, uh, pursued other things in life and you know, Pokemon's kind of become more of a hobby, but it was really fun to get to travel to a regional again um, and just spending time with the friends there and getting to compete. And what was cool too is this was the biggest regional I personally have played in, and it's one of the larger regionals ever. Uh, 530 Masters players. The biggest one I played in up to that point was about 320, which was Anaheim 2017, um, which was the also the tournament I placed the best in of them all with fifth at fifth place, um, but yeah, I was really excited to get to like experience that. And man, there's so many players. There's just like so many things that could go your way and go not your way. It, a lot can happen, but a lot of different people to meet. A lot of a lot of like uh, international players. It felt like there. So so that was really cool. Um, but with a big a big amount of players means. <laughs> 10 rounds which oh man as i get older i find out that i my mental bandwidth just gets smaller and smaller and 10 rounds is a lot of mental energy for me to commit to um so after eight rounds i was at four and four with that and with that fourth loss like i wasn't going anywhere championship points aren't that big a deal to me so i just ended up dropping two rounds early to go rest my brain back to the hotel room watch some football and talk to my wife on the phone. Yeah, I just I just needed a break and then I slept real hard that night. So, um, yeah, there's one thing I can always tell people about going to a tournament, man, prepare your, your mind, prepare your mental energy well, and that involves being physically healthy um, the night, like the night before and the day of, so. Yeah, not my, not my best finish, which I was bummed about, um, but it was fun to compete. Like I said, it had been a while. Um, I finished way better before. Um, but with these kind of big events, that's how it goes sometimes. But anyways, uh, regardless of how I did, I still wanted to talk about my team and the thought process that went into it, as well as like kind of how I see the team evolving uh, after the experience of the tournament. Um, so let's jump into that, where it ended up starting off with Skeledurge. A uh, friend and I were talking about Skeledurge a lot because we just wanted to have a really strong answer to Dondozo and I found that Skeledurge could typically t deal with Dondozo by itself um, and with the fairy Terra typing it kind of could deal with almost any Terra type that was common at the time um, so 
that was kind of the starting point. As you know, the ability unaware, or you might know, or might not know, the ability unaware ignores the uh, target stat boost, whether you're attacking or it's attacking. So it can actually be a hindrance. Like when I switched my Skeledurge into a minus four Draco Meteor. That sucked. Um, so... So that was, that's why it kind of has a good matchup against uh, Don Dozo. It ignores its defense boosts, uh, special defense boosts specifically, and you ignore its attack boosts. So uh, with the Citrus Berry to give it a little more longevity and health, uh, I just ran a pretty bulky set specifically, for, like, just leaning into that defensive side, but also wanted to do damage. Um, the thought process was it can take damage, use Torch Song to boost its special attack, and then do a lot of damage, slack off to help it just um, tank hits, and like I said, Fairy Terra type makes it now neutral or resist dark instead of being weak to it. Uh, I did have an unfortunate event of being weak to steel, which cost me in one game in the tournament. Uh, but like I said, the Terra flying Dondozo I think was common enough at the point that Terra Grass just didn't feel like the right call if I wanted it to beat Dondozo. Um, so yeah. Uh, also, I found Terra Fairy was really nice for like Annihilate, which oddly enough, I didn't run into a single Annihilate. Um, which is really surprising. But when there's that many players, sometimes you don't know what you're going to get. So, anyway, so that's Skeledurge, uh, which is kind of the starting point. Uh, next, I put up with another bulky Pokemon that uh, helps support it um, Amoongus. Uh, Amoongus is just a really good Pokemon. Um, this was a physically defensive set because I did tailor it more to dealing with both helping against Annihilate and dealing with Mousehold. Specifically that Mousehold and I like combo. So the Rocky Helmet makes Mousehold faint before it knocks Amoongus out. Uh, Regenerator is just a really good ability and usually the best ability on Amoongus. Uh, Water Terra type to help against Torkoal uh, teams. So if like Trick Room was up, I could always Terra Water. It also helps against Rain teams because uh, Amoongus is usually pretty good into Rain teams. Uh, and ter going Terra Water makes it a lot better. Uh, especially against Pelper, taking away that flying weakness, but still resisting water and also resisting grass for, like, Terra Grass. So, yeah. Um, uh, the defense EVs ensured Amoongus would live, like, the base power of 250 Rage Fist from Annihilate. So if I came up against an Annihilate that was next to, like, a Safety Goggles Mouse Hold, I could Rage Powder the Rage Fist and then next to my Azumarill, which would usually knock out a uh, pretty bulky Annihilate. So that was kind of the point to that. Spore, Rage Powder, Pollen Puff, pretty standard. I really like Pollen Puff on Amoongus. Really good for helping things with longevity. I originally was trying out Toxic because I just wanted like a nice clean answer to beat bulk up Annihilate. Uh, I ended up opting for Clear Smog instead. I think Protect would have been the best way to go, especially since I didn't face a single Annihilate. So yeah, that was kind of disappointing. <laughs> like. I was really prepared for Annihilate and Dondozo going into this and face two Dondozo and no Annihilate. Um, so, yeah, uh, so that, that was kind of the Amoongus. It's a pretty pretty standard Pokemon. Uh, pairs up nice with Skeledurge. The other Pokemon it pairs up really nice with is Azumarill. So these three were kind of my defensive backbone of the team, the Fire, Water, Grass core. Uh, but Azumarill was definitely my most offensive Pokemon on the team. Uh, I opted for Life Orb because, holy crap, Life Orb Azumarill hits so hard, and I don't know if I want to use Azumarill any other way in this format. Uh, it There were times where it is so good against so much of the common things, and that Life Orb just gives it the extra oomph to knock things out. And uh, it was, yeah, it was so fantastic. Like, Life Orb play rough would just straight, usually Oko, uh, very bulky Annihilate, especially if it took Rocky Helmet Chip, then it's, like, guaranteed as long as player of hits, um, which is 90% accuracy, which is still pretty good. So, yeah, and that was the idea with Azumarill. It's really strong. You get those really strong Aqua Jets, which are really nice against sand. Like, it could, it could do a lot of damage with an Aqua Jet to a T-Tar or a Lycanroc. Um, really, really nice. I was really impressed with Azumarill. Uh, there was times where just getting uh, Trick Room up and Azumarill going was great. So, um, Terra Grass to get around a Moongus. Because Amoongus is uh, something that Azumarill really despises if I'm not running something like Ice Spinner. Um, so yeah, that was the idea to tear grass. Can't get spored. I could get around um, Rage Powder, which was really clutch for some matchups. 
So yeah, uh, the speed was just to try and speed creep like things like Haruyama, uh, King Gambit, and uh, other Azumarill. Sadly, one of the King Gambits I played was faster than uh, Azumarill and Skeledurge. That was weird, but that's what they did, and it sucked for me. <laughs> um, the HP was to hit one point under that like divisible by 10, so I hit 199. Uh, typically, with Life Orb, that's like the most optimal stat is to be like that one digit under divisible by 10. So instead of 200, it's 199. So I'm taking 19 points of recoil from Life Orb instead of 20. Um, plus then I have nine whole points more. Um, yeah, so when you're doing Life Orb, that's a good way to do that. Uh, yeah, not much else. It's just kind of a really strong physical attacker. Uh, like I said, I think it was really strong against a lot of the meta. Uh, I highly recommend Life Orb on Azumarill, especially if you, primarily if you have like a good tricker mode or support for Azumarill. Speaking of Trick Room, that was the next thing. My team was looking pretty slow, so I had to kind of deal with that. And one of the ways to do that was through having Trick Room. So there were times where setting up Trick Room and letting Azumarill go ham uh, was my winning condition. So uh, ignore the Terra type on Ferrigraph. I think I just had that in Showdown. I was normal. Fairy is worth doing, especially if you're running Dazzling Gleam. Uh, mine ended up being normal. So anyway, so I rolled with Ferrigraph because I, I'm a huge fan of Ferrigraph. I don't know, I mean, I love Armor Tail. I really like the spread hyper voice. It's really good at chipping stuff. Um, I wish it was a little faster though. I like my Trick Room Setters to be a little more mid tier than low, like low tier speed. Um, but Armor Tail is so beautiful. Just like avoid fake out or like Prankster Taunt and all that. Um, I gave it Throat Spray. Because I needed the team needed some more extra like offensive pressure, and so by getting off a hyper voice and boosting to plus one, uh, that made Frigraph a little bit scarier. It also at that plus one with Psychic would just knock out most Amoongus with a little bit of chip. Uh, usually, like the hyper voice chip, get plus one, Psychic knocks out Amoongus because Amoongus was a problem. That was another reason for Frigraph and opting for Psychic. I really needed to make sure I was hitting Amoongus hard. Um, yeah, and Modest Nature, I wasn't opting for like speed reducing natures because I'm not hard trick room. Uh, so I like, still like to like still be faster than the like slower stuff anyways outside of trick room. Uh, let's see, the EV spread. So I went 180 HP. That made it one point higher than Annihilate's max HP. So that way Frigraph could survive a final gambit um, and then put the rest into its defense and special defense. And the reason I found this to be more efficient is because Ferrigraph's HP is so high that you get more out of investing into its lower stats and its which are its defenses. So it actually made it significantly more bulkier. And I found out that like if I was just max HP, I don't live like a plus two attack, terror ground, earthquake from Garchomp. But this spread has like a 40% chance to live, I believe, or a 60% chance to live, somewhere in that range. Uh, which is <laughs> that's pretty significant. So yeah, and then the rest is just into special attack. Uh, yeah, so that was Ferrigraph. Uh, really cool Mon. I really, this was one of my, one of my favorite additions to Gen 9 is Ferrigraph. Really love this Pokemon. Uh, it fits how I want to play the game. And the armor tail ability is so nice at times. So, so nice. Um, especially if there's a lot of fake out running around and you want to set up Trick Room. Like, dig it. All right, so like I said, my team was... Now feeling really slow and I didn't want to be too reliant on Trick Room. So this was my, I would say like experimental pick. Uh, not the Pokemon itself, but the item choice. So I wanted Hydreigon cause it's just a really solid Pokemon and it really like does, it really benefits from terrestrializing in this generation. So I chose Hydreigon. Um, because it's a little bit speedier, but what I was finding was something like Meowscarada was really annoying to lead because it was hard to lead into. So I was like, I'm gonna try Scarf Hydreigon because it gets U turn. And I saw that if I ran something like a mild nature, so I'm not lowering my attack with a little bit of attack, something like Choice Band Meowscarada just gets O code by U turn because it's four times effective, which is really cool. And there were times where like going Terra Fire Heat Wave with that Scarf late game was really nice. Um, so yeah, I, I had, I had mixed results overall with Hydreigon on ladder and best of one with not open team sheets. It was a lot, definitely fared a lot better. And I knew going into the, uh, tournament with open team sheets, it wasn't going to be as effective, but I still wanted to see nonetheless how it was 
gonna do plus i gotten pretty comfortable with it uh but yeah i would say it was it's nice for players to see that scarf and feel the pressure from it um but losing that surprise aspect hurts it as well so yeah like i said i had pretty mixed feelings about it it it, it definitely did what I wanted it to well, but then there were a lot of moments where I found myself wishing I had the ability to change my moves. Um, yeah, so it, yeah, like I said, it was my kind of my, my weird experimental choice um, that I, yeah, I'm not sure I would stick with that. And anyways, uh, but, but otherwise, yeah, Hydreigon, just a really strong Pokemon, really good at Terra. And that was the idea with this one. Just I wanted some more speed with it. And then finally, this one was ended up being my biggest toss-up. Originally, this was uh, Sash Pomot, which I liked because I liked having the fake-out support. However, again, this team didn't put on immediate pressure very well. Um, plus, I felt like I wanted something a little bit faster and a little more supportive. It's hard to say, like... Pomo can do a lot of damage and be supportive, but Mousehold does, is, I think, can do it better overall. So I ended up trying out Mousehold. Um, Follow Me is really good, and Population Bomb puts on a lot of pressure. There were some matchups where I could be like Frigograph, uh, Mousehold, and it just gave me so much flexibility with what I could do. Um, uh, Terror type is wrong again. Again, I done Showdown for a while, but I never played much on Showdown. It was Terra Ghost. So just know that was Ghost. Uh, fun fact, if you're going to use Mousehold um, with the Population Bomb stuff, don't put, if you're going to put HP uh, EVs into HP, do, don't do four. You need to do 12 or none. Um, you, you need your HP to be not divisible by six. That way you get one extra hit off on Rocky Helmet uh, before you go down. So I learned that, which is cool. Uh, so I just put the last four into defense. So Jolly Nature, good speed. I like that. Put on this thing just like can be a free KO at times, and it's awesome. Um, fun fact: I did end up missing a population bomb on the like the first hit. So in my tournament, that was the first time that happened. I fully expected that was gonna happen to me because that's just how things go. Because Wide Lens gives it a 99 accuracy, which means there's that one percent chance it'll miss, and it did. Uh, so <laughs> didn't end up costing me the game, but it was a bummer. Um, and then I was opting between Encore and Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave, Encore, both have their place. Uh, mostly this thing is just pressing Population Bomb and Follow Me, I feel like. Um, this is a real, surprisingly one of the best Pokemon in the format, and I understand why. Definitely a very strong Pokemon, so highly recommend uh, slapping onto a team to see how it goes um, if you're just looking for a six Pokemon to slap on, because that's kind of what ended up being the case here. So... Okay, so let's talk about some takeaways, um, both the good and the bad. Um, the good, I, of course, the defensive type synergy was really good because I had that fire, water, grass core, so it could switch into pretty much anything uh, when playing with it well enough, um, which that's, and that fits me how I like to play. I like being able to play a little slower, slow the game down, use good switches. Um, so yeah, and it tanked hits really well. So I could kind of just chip away at things to set up some of my other Pokemon that will do more damage to clean up. Um, particularly like sometimes with Scarf, Hydreigon, and Heat Wave, or um, letting Azumarill pick something off with uh, Aqua Jet. So, so yeah, very tanky. Could take those hits while doing some chip damage uh, for the most part. Obviously, Mouse Hold's not the bulkiest Pokemon, um, but it could actually it can take hits better than you think. And then one of my, and now kind of talking more like less about the team and more about myself at the tournament, kept a very positive attitude, which I was really proud of of myself because I've been at tournaments where I've had such bad attitudes, especially there was one period I was really bad. And that's just no fun for everyone. Like every, people, not or everyone, like just th the biggest thing you can take, like learn, I think, to improve your game, is just keep a positive attitude and let the RNG be. Like, it's okay to be frustrated, it's okay to be upset, but you just kind of like be in the moment and then move on. Uh, RNG sucks, it really sucks at times, but you have to just accept the fact that it is what it is and learn to how to mitigate it as best you can. And, you know, I had some things go wrong and I got frustrated in the moment, but you just have to like, be frustrated, like let yourself be frustrated 
it's okay to be frustrated but then don't let it linger that's when your play really starts to go bad so and speaking of bad here's the bad of the team um which it's kind of this was a lot easier for me to come up with because in the end i didn't feel as good about this team as i did going in to the tournament which was a bummer, but anyways, uh, weird speed gap. And what I mean by that is I had like, yeah, four slow Pokemon and two fast Pokemon, really fast Pokemon. So I had this weird in-between spot that I kind of would have liked to have a little more um, diversity in with speed wise. Uh, on top of that, I wasn't the slowest. So like hard trick room could have been really awkward. Um, but that speed gap made me feel really reliant on trick room at times. Um, but also when I go Trick Room, I have two fast Pokemon that either I just can't bring them or I have to like really navigate those Trick Room turns well. So, yeah, it, it the speed the speed just felt really weird. Um, and I didn't feel like I had enough support to be that reliant on Trick Room. Um, so that, that was hard. Lack of immediate punch. I mentioned how I, I wanted more immediate pressure with like something like Mouse Hold and... Throat Spray on Frigograph and Life Orb on Azumarill. Because this team on its own does not, did, it just didn't have immediate like offensive pressure, nor didn't have a bunch of setup pressure. So I had to find ways to like build that in. Um, and so that made bulk, other bulkier teams more challenging. Because like the tankiness is great, it gets hyper offense because I can take a hit and then just KO back. Because um, I'd have enough offense to deal with non bulky teams. But there were some really bulky teams that. Man, it could get really hard. Uh, I found out that Garganical is was a really scary Pokemon. That Pokemon does not get KO'd easy, especially like that Terra Poison set that the champion of the tournament had was super cool. So, so yeah, um, so that was a problem for for sure. And then personal side on the bad things, definitely didn't get enough sleep. I was tired going in, uh, which is not usually a good thing. But the biggest thing was is like like three rounds in my head just started hurting the rest of the day and I developed brain fog if you guys um, know what I'm talking about uh, where my brain just feels fuzzy and I can't think straight it was really weird like and that's why I dipped out after eight rounds my brain was fried and I went home I went back to the room rested and I slept like the dead that night and I felt so refreshed the next day I was like man I wish I was playing the tournament today uh, just goes to show the very big importance of taking care of your body. Um, so yeah, so that's the good and the bad. Uh, so the lessons from using the team is going to lead into an evolution of the team. So here's the six Pokemon as it was. And I'm going to, rather than use this for some episodes of Terrestrial Tactics, uh, as we close out Season 1, I'm going to make some changes that I want to try out. Uh, particularly, I want to switch out Skeledurge for a different fire type in uh, Tauros Fire and I want to try out Gardevoir over Frigoraph because uh, Gardevoir is not weak to dark because there's a lot of dark type Pokemon around so I'm gonna go ahead and try this out uh, one of the things though so with Gardevoir I want to use this set something like this uh, to try out uh, Trace is really cool because that actually itself kind of is a check to Dondozo because I can just go in and trace unaware and then Moonblast does a lot of damage. And I still get Trick Room Cider and Gardevoir is faster than Frigoraph, which is really nice. Uh, Tauros, I want to try out here because it's faster. It's still a fire type. Plus, I add a little bit of Intimidate to the team and Will-O-Wisp. So this will help against physical attackers. And then Mirror Herb is a cool idea to kind of deal with those def annoying Defiant users. Um, so, like, if I boost them with... I boost their Defiant, I'll just boost my attack with it and now... Especially uh, King Gambit, really threatening King Gambit that way. Um, so that's the thought there. And then I'm also going to change Hydreigon. Like I said, the Scarf had mixed results. Uh, I think I could really benefit from the Scope Lens. Especially if I'm removing Skeledurge, I want to make sure my Dondozo matchup is still good. And Focus Energy Hydreigon can be a pretty good way to handle or to have answers against Dondozo. Because if you just create Draco Meteor, you ignore its boosts. So. So yeah, that's uh, I think that's the team we're gonna see on the next terrest terrestrial tactics. To, I'll probably just like do like five episodes with this team to close out uh, the series because series two will be coming out at the beginning of February and we'll be trying to mess around with some paradox Pokemon. 
so yeah so that'll be the changes uh everyone thank you for watching i hope i hope this was more like helpful and for you all in thinking about maybe preparing for your own regionals and how to think about um you know just how to think about what how you would explain your team like what thought process goes into it and maybe you can grab a little nuggets from my explanation to apply to your team building for your next regional so anyways thanks for watching like and subscribe if you'd like to uh, get notifications for when i upload uh, whenever i upload so all right everyone thanks for watching again and have a great rest of the day bye